But my mentor, once again, he gave me some sage advice. And we remember him sitting down. He'd flown out from Colorado to Atlanta. And we were eating over here in the Perimeter Mall area at the uh, P.F. Chang's, if you know what I'm talking about. We were over there, and he, he had flown out, because that's how much he cared about it. I loved it. He flew out to walk me through this new transition of acquisition and moving on to becoming more of a full-time Agile coach. And he asked me this question. He said, what are the principles that you want to guide your life and work? <laughs> Again, I was speechless in P.F. Chang's eating my Mongolian beef. I had no answer for him because I, didn't, I had never made value-based or principle-based decisions before. It was always based on circumstance. I've built many startups. Most of them have failed. And so Bitcoin is exactly the place that I like to be. We're going to end it right there. And finally is building community, which is why we're here tonight. So as a participant in tonight's event, we are inviting you to become a member of our exclusive Agile community at vchunting.com. Peter posted the link in the chat and we will send that out to you after tonight's event. By joining this community, you're gonna have access to members only, exclusive content, forums, job postings, and be able to network with other like-minded leaders. Um, so before we get into the meat of the evening, just a quick housekeeping item. Um, we are going to do Q&A at the end, but if you do have a question throughout the presentation, feel free to throw it in the chat and we'll make sure to address it at the end. So um, I, it's my pleasure to introduce Peter to you tonight. Um, I'm very excited for you to hear his presentation. I got a sneak peek of it and it's going to be awesome. So you can certainly read his bio on our website and um, but I thought I would start with a personal story about Peter, who is one of my favorite Agilists and humans. Um, so a couple of years ago, uh, Peter and I were conducting a two-day on-site product certification training at one of our clients in the Vinings area of Atlanta. And after the first day of training, we were walking out to the parking deck. And um, as we were approaching our cars, we're walking up to Peter's car and we see that both the driver's side and um, passenger side rear view mirrors were completely destroyed. And <laughs> Peter's laughing. <laughs> and you can laugh about it now, right? <laughs> yeah, I can. And uh, <laughs> so I am in complete shock and I'm, you know, look at Peter for his reaction. And Peter goes, very calmly. Wow, looks like that person ha had a really bad day. And um, I hope that you're going to have a better day tomorrow. And I'm going to pray for them. And I was like, who is this guy? And then he goes, see you tomorrow, Jackie. And so I, I tell that story just to illustrate Peter's character. Um, you know, that's just a small example of how he reminded me that in every situation, we need to have perspective and grace. And um, he has certainly challenged me to bring those things to my career and in life. And I know he's going to bring that lens to you tonight in his presentation. So without further ado, Peter, please take it away. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jackie, for the great introduction. Yeah, I was, I was, um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I was pretty upset <laughs> uh, with those. So someone, I guess, didn't like the way I had parked and they had I had just basically broken the two side mirrors. And I was just like, man, that's pretty rough. Uh, but it is an opportunity to kind of, as, as you just said, Jackie, to take perspective of the moment. And I think it was probably, you caught me on a good day because that was the right response from me. But again, I am so blessed to be here with you guys. I'm really excited to talk with you about my experience. I love three things. I love Agile. I love startups and I love self-improvement. And so when Jackie offered me this opportunity to speak about those three things in combination with each other, I just had to jump at the opportunity. So I am going to share screen and load up this, uh, load up the deck so you guys can follow along. Let's jump right into it here and let's go, let's go. Can you guys all see that? I just wanna make sure. 
guys can all see. Yes, Peter. Yep. All right. Great. All right. So the title of today's webinar, I hope it's encouraging and it'll bless you guys. It's a combination of agile startups and self-improvement, but it's big business lessons, uh, big, big business and life lessons from building three startups with agile. Uh, Jackie already did a more than fine introduction uh, of me, but here's a little bit of stuff. I would be remiss, however, if I didn't take the one opportunity for my pride and joy, which is the picture to the right. It is my family, my wonderful, wonderful and beautiful wife, and my two amazing children. It's an outdated picture, but it's wife approved. Um, and so that's the picture that uh, you guys get to see. It's a couple of years a couple of years old but let's just jump let's just jump right in so over the years i have been involved in agile for about well close to two decades even before the agile manifesto principles were substantiated in 2001 as a developer in the late 90s for a large company we were doing pretty agile things and so i've been using agile for a long time and when i learned about scrum in 2004 and 2005 i really really took a hold of that and i leveraged scrum and agile for the startups that i wanted to build so if i I've had three successful startups on Rumbelt. The first is Action and Influence, which I'm going to discuss a little bit. The second one is VinWiki, which is a car mobile app. And the third is Yen, which is a cryptocurrency meta exchange. So very different areas of work and very different markets for sure. But I love stretching myself into different areas and building things uh, that I haven't built before. So let's just jump right in. So my wife, God bless her, I love her so much, but she has a couple nuances and a little couple you know, idiosyncrasies that really annoy me. One of them is, before we ever watch a movie, she needs to know the end. Now, I get this. I understand this perspective. I think it's important to understand where you're going, especially when it comes to building projects or building products, and so that actually kind of works out here, and I'm leveraging her kind of biases and her, uh, her, uh, her idiosyncrasy here. So I'm telling you the end. Here's the end, here's the TLDR, the high level learnings. From the three startups, what I want you to think about as I'm going through these stories with you are these learnings from Action and Influence, my first startup. Consider these ideas, finding trusted voices to leverage, finding trusted voices to leverage in your system or finding a mentor, someone who will challenge you. So keep that in context as we go through this. Another one is that I learned, uh, this was back in about 2008, 2009 period, is your job is to never persuade or convince. And I think a lot of us, especially for some of us who might be consultants or sales or coaches or marketing, I think it's easy for us to move into a mode of trying to convince someone to buy or con convince someone to do something different because we've seen better ways of doing it. However, at the end of the day, that is very frustrating. And so consider this idea in context that your job as an individual at work, regardless of where you are, is to never persuade or convince people. And I'm gonna give you kind of the back end of that and how we do that better. The third one is learn to make principle-based decisions. I'll be honest, I have a conceit. In my younger years as a younger man, especially before I was married over a decade ago, I didn't make principle-based decisions. I made very here and now decisions. I made decisions based on money. I made decisions based on the, eph the ephemeralness of the time. And I didn't think long-term. And so my first startup, one of the big business lessons to think about in, in context as we go through this is how can we make better decisions, especially value-based decisions or principle-based decisions. A couple of learnings from my second startup, VinWiki, uh, delivering content frequently solves many, many problems. We're gonna be in integrating the idea of delivering software frequently, but going a little bit farther, delivering content frequently can solve, in my opinion, and I'll discuss this in a little bit, I believe that delivering content consistently can solve up to 99% of all of your problems. Another thing to consider as we go through this is success comes from opportunities, not ideas. I have tons of ideas. They come out of me. I have notebooks of them. I could show you guys. This is one of my notebooks where I'm constantly just filling it up with ideas after ideas after ideas. The problem is anybody can have ideas. It's the opportunities that we need to capitalize on. So consider that as we go through this. And the third startup, Yen, which is the cryptocurrency meta exchange, 
Obviously, this one is somewhat self-explanatory. Never stop iterating on your ideas. And the second one is community is where long-term growth happens. So community is what we're kind of all about, kind of the context of today's webinar. And so we're going to end with that idea. So let's get into it. So we're blending agile startups and self-improvement. So let's start off with agile. You guys have probably pretty familiar with the Agile Manifesto principles. And one of the things that I really love about the Agile Manifesto is it's people centric. If you look at the first six principles of the Agile Manifesto, it's all about people delivering high priority features to our customers, welcoming the change from our users and our users and customers and clients, delivering it frequently, making sure that people work together and engage all the time, and especially hope that we have motivated individuals to do that work. And finally, like we're doing now in this new world where we can't meet physically, regardless, the most efficient, efficient and effective method of conveying any type of information is face-to-face. -face. And so Agile really is all about relationships. It allows us to grow relationships with our clients, our customers, our users, our network, and in many ways, this is one of the things that I learned in my first startup. In my first startup, Action and Influence, this company was a organizational design product. Essentially, what we built was a system and framework for allowing organizations to better understand how to optimize their teams. And so we had a psychometric assessment that I built with three PhDs out of Dallas, and we built this over a period of nine years. It was bootstrapped and subsequently acquired in 2014. But here's the story. I was dying. I was dying during this startup. I was working 20 hour work weeks. In many cases, I was flying to two cities a week to meet with investors, to meet with clients, obviously to deploy this system into their, into their sites and into their environment and culture. And I was dying. I didn't, I, I was, I was rolling my own. I, I, I often, and maybe it was egotistical of me and that's okay for me to say, but I often thought of this idea of, hey, you can go faster alone. But what I didn't realize is that you can go farther together. And so I'll, I'll tell you a story. I remember I was flying out of Atlanta in an eight day period. I flew out to Atlanta to Germany, to Potsdam, Germany, just outside Berlin to meet with a client. Right after that, I, head up, head, I went up to Neuchâtel, Switzerland, to meet with another client. And from there, I flew to New York City to meet with another client. And the problem was, is that I didn't have enough time from that flight from, from Switzerland to New York to take a shower. And so on my way to the client, I literally stopped by the closest hotel. I jumped over the fence. I took off my clothes and I jumped in the pool and that was my shower. That's how busy I was. That's how much help I needed. I, did, I couldn't figure out my schedules right. I was taking showers in random pools. And so I needed help. So here's the idea. At the end of the day, I wasn't meeting my own needs. I wasn't keeping my own, my own needs at the forefront. I was caught up in building, which I love to do. And frankly, that's one of those things where I'll look at the clock and I'll say, shoot, wow, it's 3 a.m. Maybe I should go to sleep. And in, in reality, I didn't really know how to manage my life. And so there, enter, enter this guy, Bob, in late 2008. Enter this guy, Bob. Bob Hartman. He ended up being a trusted voice. I met him at an Agile conference out in Colorado, and we sat down and I told him my struggles as a growing Agile coach, an entrepreneur with a pretty successful startup that was making its way up. And, and I kind of poured into him and, I, and, and we built a relationship. And I'll never, ever forget one of the questions he asked me at this Agile conference. He said, how can we build your business and work? around the life you want to have. It shocked me. I paused. I remember as much as easy it is for me to speak and to communicate and to give answers right from the hip, he caught me off guard. I stumbled. I couldn't communicate effectively. I never considered this idea. And so 
he ended up becoming one of my few mentors that have helped me grow not only through the startups that I've built, but the Agile company that I ended up building with him, Agile for All, that I work and help out uh, with right now. And so here's a here's a, a picture of us. We do a, a weekly a weekly YouTube uh, uh, show where we talk about whether something is real agile or BS. And so we've had a great friendship for over a decade now. But he was someone who was planted into my life, maybe by someone above. Who knows? All I know is that he has been a challenging voice into my system ever since. So here's some quick takeaways because I want to make it clear because I like educating and helping people. Grow your network of trusted voices in your system. Find those people that are willing to challenge you. Consider potentially finding a mentor. It's a more deeper relationship and it's a more intentional relationship for sure. But I'll tell you out of the couple mentors that I've had over the decades of doing work, they have been everything that I've needed to keep a sustainable pace and in many ways keep my head above water. Find those people that challenge you and ask you those tough questions. Trust me, you'll be better off for it. Another thing that my mentor, Bob Hartman, had taught me is this idea of not convincing or persuading. As, as, I, as I was growing in the, the agile world and doing more consulting and changing, uh, uh, consulting and coaching, one of the things that I love, and even this right here as a webinar, I've met many of you guys for the first time. It's exciting to see you guys here. I'm glad you're here. But you know what? For me, coaching and consulting, there's something really fun about that. And the reason is, is because I actually love the challenge of proving myself over and over again, not only to other people, but to myself. Can I do it? Can I make it? Can I create that experience? Can I help that client in the right way? I love doing this, but sometimes I get frustrated. Sometimes I feel like they should be moving faster. Sometimes I feel like they should get it. Sometimes I can see the constraints and dependencies within organizational dysfunctions, and I know that they can fix it, and I want them to because I care that much, but sometimes I get frustrated. I remember this one time I was sitting down with Bob and we were at a restaurant eating some really expensive steaks, which is what we, what we should get. We deserve that after a long day at a client site. And I was telling him and I was pouring into him saying, man, I'm so frustrated with this client. They can do so much with this organization. They can do so much. And the leadership isn't being radically transparent around what they need to do to their management and to the other leadership and their employees. I was livid in some ways because I was so angry and so frustrated that they couldn't get to where they needed to be. And he gave me some sage advice and it's fundamentally changed the way that I've approached consulting ever since. He said this, he said, 10% of people will always love you no matter what you do. 10% will dislike you and there's nothing you can really do about it. It's the 80% that you have the opportunity to inspire and encourage. And I've taken that to heart. This again is one of those opportunities where you have individuals like a mentor or someone in your system that can speak to you and give you that positive encouragement, give you that insight, give you that mental model or worldview or idea that can fundamentally change the trajectory of your life. This sage advice I have repeated easily over a hundred times, whether it was in a client or in a training class or whether it was with friends. This is something that I've leveraged all the time. Our opportunity is to inspire and to not worry about those who love us and certainly those that don't like us. So your takeaways, speak the truth, bring your whole self. This is something that Bob uh, really helped help me understand as a, as a young entrepreneur and young agile coach is to bring your full self of radical transparency to the equation. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Don't be ashamed of the things that you care about. Speak the truth in love. And don't worry about the perceptions of others. <laughs> in many ways, you can't control their opinion anyway. And so your job is to never try to convince or persuade people that your idea is great. Your, your opportunity, if you're taking notes, is to merely speak the truth, your truth, and have great conversations around what that means within the context of your clients, your network, your users, or the customers that you're working for. Another thing that I learned through my first startup action and influence is making principle based decisions. What was great as we move towards the 2014 time, time period is that the timing was perfect. 
we had the right investors, we had the right interested parties for an acquisition, and my mentor was right there with me. He had seen all the hard work that I had done, he had seen all the grinding of 20 hour plus work days, and in many ways, he was there to tell me that it's all okay, and it's all gonna work out. I had this assumption, I had this assumption that hard work plus dedication equaled success. But in, many, but in many of the choices that I made during this first startup, I based those decisions on circumstance. Was it the right thing to do at that moment in time? Did it make sense? Yeah, maybe I was cutting a little, cutting the corners just a little bit. Maybe I was shaving the ice a little bit. Maybe I wasn't being true to myself. Maybe I was a little, little put out by something, but you know what, I can handle it because it was worth it. It was worth that compromise. You know. I didn't say no a whole lot back then, but my mentor, once again, he gave me some sage advice. And we remember him sitting down, he had flown out from Colorado to Atlanta, and we were eating over here in the Perimeter Mall area at the uh, P.F. Chang's, if you know what I'm talking about. We were over there and he, he had flown out, because that's how much he cared about it, I loved it. He flew out to walk me through this new transition of acquisition and moving on to becoming more of a full-time Agile coach. And he asked me this question. He said, what are the principles that you want to guide your life and work? <laughs> Again, I was speechless in P.F. Chang's eating my Mongolian beef. I had no answer for him because I, didn't, I had never made value-based or principle-based decisions before. It was always based on circumstance. If the couple pictures to the right, you'll see I didn't know how to say no. Frankly, in many cases, I didn't know how to negotiate as well. I certainly compromised my values more than I would be willing to admit. And I tolerated things that right now I would never tolerate ever again. And I certainly made internal promises that I've broken to myself. And so, my mentor, right, it's all about agile and relationships. My mentor helped me in so many ways through my first startup from helping me understand principle-based decisions, not to compromise my values, to consider what I'm willing to do. It was an absolute, and it was a relationship that I will continue to cherish. And so here, here's some takeaways from this. Take time to sit down and write down out what your principles are like and how you want to guide your life. I'll give you three of my favorites. I have them written down on sticky notes. I got sticky notes at my desk right here and they're written down right in front of me. Happiness is a choice. That's a principle that I live by. I can be salty if I want, but at the end of the day, I can choose the way that I engage with the world. Another one is forgive first. I have one, I have a little nugget here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Uh, but it says, whom do you need to forgive and why do you need to forgive him or her? This is staring me in the eyeball every day. And the reason is, is because forgiveness in many ways is the answer to freedom, is the answer for freedom. It allows us to be free from the internal mental gymnastics and the struggles of life. When we can forgive, we can move on. And finally, radical transparency is a principle of how I live my life today. Being scars and all blood and all, calluses and all. I'll show you everything I got as long as you're willing to show me what you've got. Write down those principles for work. And they, they can be tough, but take that time out. And so from my first startup, I learned a ton about the value of relationships, the value of mentoring, and even more, the value of people in my system willing to challenge me as I grow. Let's talk a little bit more about Agile. Agile is all about execution. It's all about hashtag delivering or hashtag shipping. One of my favorite principles from the Agile Manifesto is deliver software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference to the shorter time scale, right? Agile is all about delivering. It's all about executing. It allows for us to get feedback loops from our customers to understand what we need to build, but sometimes even more importantly, what we shouldn't build. What's great about shipping, it's what's great about delivering, it allows us to grow real relationships with our customers, our users, and our clients. Why? Because shipping software, shipping product, actually solves more problems than anything else. When you can ship something, they can give you feedback on it, and you can have that conversation to figure out what you need to do next and where your trajectory needs to go. And so, likewise, with shipping constantly product, one thing I learned, well, maybe we should ship content a lot. 
So my second startup, VinWiki, it's, uh, I've been involved with it for five years now. We have a 1.2 million YouTube subscribers and our app is growing by 300 plus users per day. We are in growth mode. Booyah. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's a wonderful, wonderful startup. And we have a great group of guys, as you can see down there in, in the picture on the bottom right. But when we started, when we started this startup, we had a general idea of what we wanted to build. As a car guy through and through, as you could probably see, I got pictures of cars behind me. I'm literally speaking to you from my garage, i.e. my place of peace. And I got go-karts behind me and race cars over there. I like to say that motorsports and cars is a genetic disorder. It runs through my entire family through and through. And as a bunch of car guys coming together to build an app for car guys, we had a general idea of what we wanted to build. But the problem is we didn't really know exactly who our users needed to be. This picture, if you zoom in on it, you'll see it says user personas down here on this wall board that we have. This was our, this was our um, meeting to talk about who we think we should build it with. We had some ideas around who it should be, and we just had enough information to begin. But what we found is that delivering content and continuing to deliver content revealed to us who we really needed to serve. I truly believe that 99% of all your problems can be solved by creating content. Why? Because when you ship content, it requires you to publish your ideas, profound or not. It doesn't matter. If you're building a brand, you want to be better at your role at work. You want to be, grow to be a subject matter expert. Do you want to grow yourself into a new hobby or career? Something that I do with all of my startups, being having my startups in completely different markets. Well, creating content is the best way to do it. When you create content, you bring people to yourself, especially, and this is one of the great things that I love about the online world, is that whenever you post anything online, someone will tell you that you're wrong. That's great. It's awesome. Sometimes they use flowery language and tell you that you, they never want to see you again, but that's okay too. Our dedication to shipping content to the web allowed us to get massive amounts of feedback from real users who said, I don't like this idea. I don't like the way you're presenting this. I don't like these ideas that you're going to build for the app. What have, have you thought about this? Creating content allows people to know number one, what you're doing, but more importantly, number two, they can give you feedback on it. And so what we found is that with any type of car app, car, car people love car stories. And so here's a picture of me. Um, when I, uh, it's a, me talking about my, uh, buying a, a Lamborghini with Bitcoin, uh, and it has 1.7 million views. Uh, and we found that car guys not only love stories about cars, but they love stories about really expensive cars, and they love unique stories about expensive cars. And so that became our first user persona that we focused on, exotic car owners and motorsports enthusiasts. What we found, however, is because we focused on the, that particular user set, that ended up growing all of the rest. Those who love imports, those who love Japanese or German imports, those that love just Jeeps or trucks. What was really intriguing is that since we focused on the top level, the expensive exotic car world, it had a trickle down effect that frankly, none of us could have ever planned for. So what's the takeaway? If you want to improve any part of your life, creating content is the best way to learn. Bring people to yourself, receive feedback, solidify your thinking, and to better understand whether it's worth doing. One of the things that we were doing in the Agile community, uh, which we're inviting all of you guys to, is creating massive amounts of content to help help pour ourselves out into the web so that people can take that information and hopefully leverage it to improve not only the way that they do work, but hopefully improve their own lives as well. And the second takeaway is when you create content, man, you learn to be a better communicator about what you're doing and what you know. The best way, the best salespeople, and I'm sure Ren, you're listening here, you're on here, the best salespeople are great storytellers. The best salespeople are great communicators. And if you want to sell anything, whether it be a product, your own ideas, or a startup, 
creating content would unlock your ability to communicate more effectively. So let's talk more about Agile. Agile is all about face-to-face -face conversation. The most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face. -face. Again, Agile is people-centric. Problems are solved by people, not machines. But maybe in the future, it will be AI. So whenever I, whenever I talk about problems are being solved by people, sometimes I, I bite my, my, my cheek a little bit because I wonder, how long is this statement actually going to last and how long is it going to be true? But Regardless, real innovation only happens when you bring people together. That's how real work gets done. And of course, face-to-face -face conversation allows for deeper relationships, which is why Jackie and I have wanted to do this with Kunle and Ren, because we want to grow greater, uh, deeper relationships with you guys. You guys are our network. You guys are the people that we work with and we care about. And so success comes from the opportunities, not necessarily ideas. You know, we try, we were, uh, I'll tell you a story. We were so tired at, at one point in this startup, VinWiki. We were so tired. We were meeting with investors. We we're flying all around. We were doing the hard work. And there was an opportunity up in New York City with an investor who had flown in from Canada. They had pinged us last minute, literally 18 hours, in, uh, bef uh, 18 hours ahead. And they said, we're going to be in New York City. Do you want to meet? And I'm, I remember looking at Ed, my co-founder there on the left, and I said, man, do you want to go up there? Like, we got so much on our backlog to do. Like, I'm not feeling it, bro. I don't want to do it. He was like, I don't want to do it either. But you know what? We bit the bullet. We said, let's go. And it ended up being one of the best conversations that we ever had. Not only did this investor take the time, more than enough time, to really dig into the application, but he gave us so much good advice around where we need to experiment next, where, what, what features he thinks that we need to build next. And two out of the four features that he suggested ended up being some of the best features that we added to the application. Success comes from these opportunities. You can have lots of ideas, but at the end of the day, you have to take those opportunities to engage with people, to execute on those ideas, and to take those opportunities to make sure that you can make something real out of it. We can have lots of ideas. You can write them down on note papers. You can write them down on sticky notes, but it's only the act of executing through those opportunities with other people where things can actually happen. So what are the takeaways? Really simple. Are your ideas, my ideas are relatively worthless unless someone you know, or you tell someone about it or you engage with someone about it. We, in many ways, from cognitive psychology, we know that many of our ideas are half-baked. They're not fully formed. I always like to say we need to smash atoms together, smash atoms with other people so we can get that synergy. We can find those new emergent ideas that come through conversation. It's that is where the juice is squeezed. And those are the opportunities that really make the difference in not only your life, but in many ways, the work that you do at work. So take every opportunity to engage with more people. Go outside your comfort zone. Ask for more meetings. Network the hell out of life. I found that whenever I've gone the extra mile, yeah, man, I didn't do, I'd never get a great sleep that night because I'm so tired. But I'll tell you, I've never regretted taking that extra step. So let's go back to Agile. Working software. Well, working software is the primary measure of progress. This is one of my favorites. And the reason is, is that progress equals ship software. But notice, notice if you haven't, notice that when it comes to this particular principle of the Agile Manifesto, it doesn't say that it's the right working software. Neither does it say it's the wrong working software. It only says working software is a primary measure of progress. I love that because even when you build the wrong working software, you're still making progress because now you know what you shouldn't do. And in many cases, you're delivering an Agile, so you're only taking two weeks instead of two months to build it. And let's be honest, in many cases, people don't really know what they need until they see what they don't want. And so delivering frequently, delivering software is progress. And in many ways, it's the best progress you can ever have. So let's move on to my third startup and some learnings around that. So Yen was a cryptocurrency startup. I got 4.8 million in venture funding for this particular idea, and I've been working on it for three years. Currently, Yen is trying to find better product market fit because 
you know what? When it comes to the cryptocurrency market, nobody knows what the hell they're doing. <laughs> but this was one of those opportunities for me to pivot and learn something brand new, an adventure into cryptocurrency, an opportunity to learn something that I've never imagined that I'd ever learn. And in many ways, it's been one of the biggest blessings of my recent life. So what did we do in this particular startup? Well, the agile principle that we're talking about within context is delivering software frequently. And so what did we do? We did exactly that. In our first year with our venture funded money, we developed six MVPs in 12 months. We built all these different applications, getting massive amounts of feedback. The first thing that we built was the Bitcoin.pub. It was a forum to gather feedback from the cryptocurrency world at large to understand what they actually needed. From that feedback, we built the 10 days of Bitcoin system that allowed people to learn very quickly about what cryptocurrency and Bitcoin was all about. And then we built a 90 day challenge, 90 videos of learning about cryptocurrency, growing in their knowledge of cryptocurrency and improving their own lives. A lot of it was kind of self-help stuff. From that feedback, we, we found that, you know what they needed? They needed a better exchange system. And so we built it coin puffs, kind of a cool name. We always imagined this idea of waking up in the morning and, and reading the newspaper and getting your news of the latest stock picks and these types of things. And so we ended up building a system called coin puffs, which was really great because it gave us enough feedback to understand what our next iteration of it was. But before that, we figured that it was important for everyone out there to read the news. And we were receiving a lot of feedback from our users in the community around, hey, we want to know, Peter, what you're reading. We want to understand what's out there. And so we built the world's first uh, RSS newsreader for cryptocurrency called Crypto Yum. And so it looks a lot like Feedly. Um, and, and some of you guys might use that system, but it's a great system if you just want to learn about crypto. And finally, our final iteration was our meta exchange and where we ended up combining all of these things. We created a community platform. We created an education platform. We created a news, news function and feature as well as obviously being able to buy and sell cryptocurrencies in one place. And so through all of these things, from shipping and shipping and shipping and shipping, from delivering and delivering and delivering and delivering, we got massive amounts of feedback from the community to understand what we needed to build next. So what's the takeaway? Well, shipping product or content are excellent steps towards personal and professional growth. It's the best way to get feedback. Our default in our company, and I would hope, maybe some of you, the default should be a doing attitude. Thinking is great, but doing is far better. It is only through the act of execution that we realize whether we were right or whether we were wrong. Another Agile Manifesto principle is motivated people. Build projects around motivated people. Give them the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done. Motivated people only, please. This was an opportunity for me in this particular startup to once again take the reins and the helm of a company and start growing it to lots and lots of employees. And I learned once again that, well, who you hire can make or break your project. And I, I thought I was a good people manager. I thought I was great at hiring people because I've had experience doing it before. But within each context and each client, each company, uh, the context is completely different. The variables are different and the needs are different. And what I found, what I found that not only is that hi hiring is so important, which I could ex expend another two hours talking about, but I found that investing more deeply into the community was actually something that allowed us to build even better. And not only that, I got to get my own personal needs fulfilled as I connected with people all over the world. I've been doing creating communities for a long time. The pictures that you see here are, a, are my first, some of my first interviews 15 years ago. This is on Vimeo. And so you can see the crappy chat systems I was using, the crappy overlays that I was using. I interviewed these guys 15 years ago in the agile world. Um, and so I've been building communities for a long time using crappy systems. But we have such better systems now for community and helping people understand the why, right? Helping under, people understand the why behind what they do helps them not only with motivation in the community, but also can help them as an employee. So I'm sure you guys know about that. 
community is king. And so one of the things that has blessed me through this last startup is the amount of meetups that we've created all over the world. Here's, here's a, a picture right here of, we, uh, of our first summit held here in Atlanta a couple of years back. Our first Yen conference. We had people fly from all over, Korea, Japan, Russia, Italy, Malta, UK, Iceland. Actually, the guy on the far right is from Iceland. Uh, we had people from all over the world, people who loved what we were doing, come together and pour into us and allow us to receive their feedback. And, and it, man, I'll tell you, that the community feedback allowed us to build some of the best functions and best products out there. We created, again, we created forums, we created chat systems, we established meetups all around the world, and we empowered the, our community to lead their own meetups supported by us. We would just send them swag, we would send them support and collateral to continue to do it within autonomy and self-organization to help support this application and this, you know, fledgling startup that they were so passionate about as well. So what is the takeaways from this other, this last startup? Well, find communities of practice that you can sink your teeth into. There are plenty out there. There are communities from that, that span the entire gamut from agile, obviously to, to whatever you want, fill in the blank. It's the internet. If there's some interest out there, I guarantee you it might be on the dark web, but I guarantee you, there's someone out there that's created a community around it. You can always build your own community of interest or internal community for your company, which is something that I've been doing as of recent. I've helped four companies in the last couple of years create internal communities of practice within their companies so that they can start leveraging not only their employees' expertise and tactical expertise in you know, doing the work that they need to do, but creating a community of practice so they can start extracting even more opportunities, more lessons, more, more, more ideas that uh, aren't necessarily pertaining to work or fully germane to the work that they do. Lastly, communities can provide you with some of the best memories of your life. And I'll tell you, in the last couple of years building this startup, it has been awesome. I've met people from around the world and it has changed my life. So what's the review? Always like to uh, go out with a review. Find trusted voices to leverage or find a mentor. Your job is to never persuade or convince. Learn to make principle-based decisions, something I wish I had done far sooner than I did. Delivering content frequently or delivering uh, content frequently solves many problems. Success comes from your opportunities, not necessarily your ideas. Never stop iterating on those ideas. And community is where long-term growth happens. Thanks so much, guys, for giving me the opportunity to share my story of agile startups and self-improvement. Uh, it's been a blessing. Thank you so much, Jackie, for the opportunity to share with you guys. Um, I would invite all of you to join our community at uh, the agile community at vchunting.com. Sign up and be part of it. It's also built by Jackie and me. So, you know, you got a little bit of love in there. So I'll hand it over back to Jackie. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you, Peter. That was awesome. Um, I thought I would just go over a couple of my personal takeaways from your presentation. I thought that was so great. Um, first, just, uh, you know, I am in alignment with you and always have been around how much, how agile um, is such people centric. I think years ago you shared with me, um, you know, that we tend to use the word resources when we're talking about hiring in companies. Um, and yet we're, you know, we're humans, we're not resources. So I always encourage my clients to use the word people instead of resources. Um, and I love how that ties back to the agile framework. Um, also your suggestion to execute on ideas. I, you know, like you and like several people in the, in this presentation tonight, we have tons of ideas all day, but it doesn't mean anything if we aren't able to execute on them, learn, and then, you know, make, improve and iterate on those as well. Again, back to the Agile framework. Um, and then just, uh, you know, building a community of, community of practice within your own company, I think is huge. Um, you know, it really would be opportunities for you to show value to leadership um, and show your own leadership skills to your peers, your colleagues, and your leaders. So I love that idea. So I think, you know, that's a great, great takeaway for all of us tonight. Um, 
And so we could do a quick Q&A session. Um, I noticed there was a couple put in the chat, so I'll go ahead and read the first one. Oh, this is great. This is, um, do you have any tactical advice for starting content creation? It's daunting to me, but I see people doing it daily, seemingly very easily. I'm sure it's not as easy as we all, it appears, right, Peter? Sure, well, I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you two, two avenues. The first is you can start with blogging. And the best place to start is just with a wordpress.org or you can go to wordpress.com um, and create a blog. You can uh, load up a blog in less than five minutes. It's that easy. That's a great way of creating content. However, we are now moving, Tracy, into the mobile first, video first, remote work world. And because of, the, because of these shifts in the market conditions, and because of the shifts in the way that people are engaging and doing work now, I would actually recommend doing the harder avenue. The harder avenue is video. And so I've, again, I've, I've been doing video for 15 plus years, so I, I'm, I'm a little biased and, and, and sometimes it's hard for me to, to remember how hard it was to begin. But one thing that I've been helping people with is starting by doing one minute clips. And where else better to do it? Instagram or TikTok. And so I've helped two people start, uh, start their kind of video journey by using TikTok. There's no one watching you, there's no one following you, but it'll give you enough practice to, be, to learn how to be in front of a camera and to start figuring out how to communicate effectively. You're gonna fumble over your words, that's fine. If you, once, if you want, I can show you, I can, actually if you want, I, can, I type this in, I don't mind it. You can go to www.vimeo.com slash Agile Scout. If you go there, you can see my videos from 10 to 15 years ago and you'll say, wow, Peter, you really sucked at doing interviews. You were really terrible. Yes, 15 years ago I was. Uh, and I hope I'm a little bit better now. But everyone has to start off being pretty sucky at creating content. Um, and just, I would say, and I don't want to sound terse here, but you kind of have to get over that. Because once you learn how to be comfortable, um, this is something that I, I talked about with a client the other day, is once you learn how to become comfortable in video, the next step is to being able to bring your whole self into video. Now, that translation sometimes is hard, but I tell you, when you can bring your whole self, you, know, you might be able to bring your whole self you know, in a work situation, right? In real life, meeting people, physical stuff, but to be able to reveal yourself in your whole self on video is a powerful, powerful uh, superpower. Because when you can communicate effectively your true self through video, just like we're doing right here, I'll tell you, you can grow relationships. You can have more profound conversations with your clients, your customers, or anyone that you're talking to online. And if you're creating content for the opportunity to bring people to yourself, well, people are more going to be more willing to follow you, subscribe to you, and want to be with you and learn from you if you can effectively communicate on video and it's obvious that you're bringing your full self to the game. So start off with WordPress or you could start off with, uh, uh, not Vimeo, uh, Instagram or TikTok as starting places where no one's going to follow you because no one knows you, but it'll be a great opportunity to begin and learn. That's a great suggestion. Thank you so much. I like TikTok. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. I, and Tracy, if you want to hit me up in the Agile community later, I can send you my TikTok. Uh, okay. Oh, which cool. I'm yeah. doing one minute clips where I'm just talking about what I'm doing and trying to be encouraging. It's not perfect. It's off the cuff, but I can show you how crappy I am at it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I guess I'll have to download TikTok. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> um, I think we have time for one more question. So this is from Coonley. This is a great one. Where can we find trusted voices, those that you suggested we connect with? Well, the short answer is find communities of practice in what you're interested in, and then be assertive to asking questions and bringing people into your life. I will tell you, um, I will tell you this, and it's so powerful, that if you ever ask anyone, you say something to the effect of, hey, would you be willing to help me? Or would you be willing to pour, you know, give me advice? I've never 
ever been turned down. I've never had anyone say, you know, Peter, I like you, but not that much. Uh, I don't want to help. I don't want to help you. It's always been, wow, Peter, I, you seem kind of well put together. Like, why do you need my help? And my answer often is because I see something in you that I'm deficient in. And I want to learn about that. I want to learn how to do that better. And yeah, it's a humbling position to put yourself into. Uh, but I'll tell you, when, when, when they get engaged and those individuals say yes, and they start pouring into you, you'll not only be a better person for it, but you could end up establishing a relationship that will last the rest of your life. And something that I love doing with a couple of my mentors is I love repeating this mantra because it's just, it brings me alive to think about it is when I talk with them, I say, man, I just love doing life with you. And, and, and that is like, the summarized version, you know, the summarized statement when I talk to them, I'm just like, man, dude, bro, I just love doing life with you. And actually, I'll go even farther. Jack, when I, so I trained Jackie, I trained Jackie in a certified scrum master and certified scrum product owner course years ago, years ago, probably close to like seven or eight, you know, seven years ago or now. But I just love doing life with Jackie. And it's been worth it. It's been worth it. All the times that we've met, all the times we've done client work together, all the times we, when we've been able to spitball things and just, we were talking just the other night. Um, it's, it is a blessing to do life with other great people. And so be intentional, ask the question. And I tell you, uh, it, it, the, law of, the law of large numbers will win. You keep asking people, you end up finding someone that'll say, Kunle, you're the man. I want to help you out, brother. And that person will be the key to maybe your next success. Awesome. That's great advice, Peter. Thank you. So I think that is about our time. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know we're, uh, we're so excited that you came tonight. We are inviting each of you to join us at bchunting.com. Join our Agile community. Um, connect with like-minded leaders in our, um, in our community. We'll send that out after as well. Um, again, you'll have access to exclusive content, forums, job postings, and just connecting with other great humans. Um, this was our first uh, event in the leadership series. And so, you know, we truly value feedback loops. Again, another component of the Agile framework. And so we love to hear feedback um, around things you want to learn about and hear about in the future and anything we can iterate on and improve upon. So uh, thank you everyone for joining. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your week. And we look forward to seeing you at the next event. Good night. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Peter. Thank Good night. Thanks, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Peter. Good night, guys. Thanks, Peter. Bye, Peter. Bye, Jackie.